Um, first thing I'd like to ask everyone to go ahead and mute if you would. If, I'm not sure if Larry can mute us all, but if uh, Larry will go ahead and mute it, that just uh, keeps any background. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, that, that just keeps any background noise from happening as people continue to sign in. Um, I want to try to start on time, so uh, it's three o'clock. Um, we ask everybody to utilize your space bar to unmute if you're using your computer uh, or feel free to unmute. Uh, if you want to have questions with, uh, with Dan during his presentation. Uh, we've got a unique situation today. Um, goofballs by Dan. Dan comes to us from New Jersey. Uh, he carves golf balls. Uh, he's on both Facebook and Instagram. Uh, he's been carving golf balls for over 20 years. Uh, he's going to take us through the process of how he does it and do a demonstration. Uh, one of the unique things that we're going to do today is Dan's actually going to do a giveaway. He has two starter kits uh, that he's graciously offered up uh, to all of our, for, for this particular presentation. Uh, what's going to happen is um, Tom's going to be writing down the names of all the people that are participating today on the uh, live stream. And at the end, Tom will take over and handle the, uh, the random drawing for those two, um, those two starter kits. Uh, so he'll want to gather some information from you all at the end. Um, utilize the chat function at the bottom if you don't want to speak. And again, uh, Dan has said to feel free to chime in as he gets started on his uh, demonstration and uh, ask questions as we go. And again, this is uh, for you all as carvers. Um, so feel free to have an interactive conversation. Um, thanks again for taking time out of your day to join us here. And uh, again, we'll continue to do these. If you have any suggestions on future uh, presentations, feel free to let me or Tom know, and we'll try to get those lined up. So uh, without saying anything else, Dan, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. And uh, Sounds great. Presentation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to just switch screens here. For a second. A um, little bit about myself. My name is Dan Gallagher. I live in uh, the state of New Jersey, um, originally from Pennsylvania. Uh, and I've been carving for over 20 years. Um, I would say golf balls themselves, probably the last uh, 10, 15 years I've been working on those. Um, so when I started out, uh, I started out in 1993. Um, I had a school assignment. Uh, we were studying the state of Alaska, and uh, one of the parts of the project was, out of a bar of soap, make a native animal. Um, my dad, thankfully, was a wood carver, and so he sat down with me. He had his bar of ivory soap. I had my bar of ivory soap, and we carved a polar bear together. Uh, so on the right there is one of the earliest photos I have from 1995. Uh, him and I were both members of the Delaware Valley Woodcarvers Association. Uh, and that was the year I was able to have half a table with my dad at the show. Uh, so you can see uh, to the right of me is the polar bear, as white as it was back then, ivory soap. I also, once I learned how to control a sharpened popsicle stick, which is what we used as our knife for the bar of soap, I could then graduate up to sharp knives and do wood carving and also do some power carving. So in the middle there, I had a uh, mouse on a block of cheese. And then to the left of that, I had a half moon Santa Claus Christmas ornament. And as you can see in the bottom picture uh, on the slide there, that was a picture back in June of 2019. That's the same polar bear out of a bar of ivory soap. It's just kind of aged this yellow color over the years. Um, the only additions onto that bar of soap were three matchsticks, each for the eyes and the nose with just a little bit of black Sharpie on there. That's how I started out carving. Um, from there, uh, I went and I was also in the Boy Scouts and I worked at Treasure Island Scout Camp and I was teaching wood carving merit badge. And through carving, I discovered my career. Uh, I kind of figured if each week, if I can have 50 scouts all with knives in their hands all carving at the same time and thankfully no one losing a finger teaching might be something good for me uh, and so i got into being an educator 
and started teaching. And that's what my career path has been now um, in my adult life. But I have done wood carvings as well. Um, so here are some of the carvings I've done over the years. Uh, I've been very lucky and been able to take some classes with some great carvers um, around the country and be able to really hone my, my skills, my craft. A um, couple more carvings. I've been members not only in the Delaware Valley Wood Carvers, but also the North Jersey Wood Carvers Club has uh, a group that meets uh, about monthly. Um, and I've also participated in a couple shows throughout the years. Um, but what really happened was in 2001, as I was getting ready to go off to college, I could not bring my carving tools to college. I couldn't bring all my power tools, uh, my portable uh, dust collector, you know, all the gouges and knives. It just would not look right in a dorm room. So I happened to see another carver um, in my club was toying around a little bit with golf balls. And I asked him, how hard was it? And he said, literally, the hardest part is just opening it up. Once you open it up, it carves just like basswood, except that you don't have a grain, so you don't have to worry about what direction you're cutting. Um, so I said, all right, let me start trying that. And I started doing that in my dorm room in college and kind of been toying around with that ever since. Um, golf balls have provided me a small project, simple to do, uh, you know, in three hours I can have a face carved. And what I usually do is I wait till I have, uh, about a half a dozen to a dozen carved and then I'll sit down and I'll paint them. When it comes to painting, the only things I typically worry about are the eyes and the mouth, you know, the teeth. If it has any extra feature, like it's wearing a hat on backwards or, an eye patch or some of my other more uh, wackier ones like Marvin the Martian up there. Um, then I'll put some more paint on it depending on what the, the project is. Um, I try to stick with golf themed materials. Um, so every golf ball is mounted on a golf tee. Um, if I'm doing like the duck, uh, that was using golf tees to make the legs. Um, if I'm doing like a cigar, I use the tip of the golf tee to make the cigar. Um, I even done one where the tongue's sticking out. And so I've cheated. I've taken the back end of the cap off, cut some of the golf ball from the back to kind of shape my tongue and use that so that I'm still using the golf ball to make my creation. Um, I was even lucky enough, uh, I've been asked, couple different uh, charity organizations have reached out to me to make golf balls um, that they would use as giveaways for golf tournaments. Um, so I've been commissioned and one uh, charity last year, they said that they were going to actually have uh, Merrill Reese, who's the voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, come out as the MC for their event. And they said, you know, could you, could you make one for Merrill? And I said, no problem. Can you make sure you take a picture of him with it? I'd love to have that and, you know, see how happy he is to get one. So I've been pretty fortunate to, to be able to do that. As you can hopefully see on the screen right now, this is kind of my process. It starts off with opening the golf ball. The interesting thing is um, golf balls nowadays are no longer the rubber band wound up rubber bands as they were many years ago. I still find one every now and then. Um, I typically don't go out and buy golf balls. I usually find them. People who find them, give them to me. I've got three boxes down in my shop uh, filled with golf balls right now that I'm going to eventually get to. Um, I never know what's going to be the color inside. So it's almost like uh, Christmas morning, unwrapping gifts. I don't know what's in it until I pop that cap off. Um, so the first step is I pop the cap off. And then what I usually do is I rough it up with a knife um, because the coating of the outside of the golf ball still has this kind of glue that held the cap on. Um, and I kind of rough it up because I, it's just, it's very slippery sometimes. And so my knife can slip a little bit. Um, so if I started carving eyes right away without roughing it up, going into that type of detail, I'm afraid that the knife blade's going to slip. So step two is I have it all roughed up and then I usually draw on center lines. 
And then I go into starting to work on the eyes. When I typically carve a golf ball, I'm only worried about um, the eyes and the mouth. I don't worry about carving a nose because I figure I can get enough expression out of my face through eyes and the mouth. Um, so I'll start by uh, drawing on the shape of my eyes, doing stop cuts, roughing out the inside of the eye, and then starting to rough out the outside of the eye to kind of get rid of all those sharp edges. Um, as you can also see on that third, on that third image, I also kind of draw on like a little bit of a box, kind of right where the bridge of the nose would be and right where the eyebrows would meet because I usually take a U gouge and will lightly gouge out that area to kind of give me some depth, some separation for the eyebrows. Then the next step is I draw on lines to do my eyelids. I also draw in where my eyebrow is gonna be and I go through that with a V gouge. Then I start worrying about where the mouth's gonna be. I start putting in some detail of the teeth as well as um, starting to get the forehead ready for my last step, which is just the last details, putting on wrinkles of the forehead, uh, putting on some wrinkles in the corners of the eyes. Sometimes I'll even do a, a light wrinkle under the eye. Um, and then also kind of putting on some wrinkles where the cheeks would be. And that's kind of what I do. It just varies on what kind of shape the eyeballs and the mouth are gonna take. I've been fortunate over the last couple of years to also be asked to come in and do demonstrations. So I've gone to different wood carving shows and I have each one of those stages, as you can see on the table here, um, mounted. So you can see from start to finish, what's the process for carving a golf ball. Um, I've also been asked to come in and do soap carving demonstrations. So everyone will have a sharpened popsicle stick, a bar of soap, and we'll start learning some of the basics of carving towards your thumb, carving away from yourself, doing a stop cut. Um, so things like that. And then as you said before, uh, as Blake said in the beginning there, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway of two kind of starter kits. So you'll get a golf ball that's already been opened. I roughed it up already and drew on center lines. You'll get a golf tee and what I use for bases and then the set of directions. And I'm gonna throw some stickers in there as well. I'm also gonna put on the uh, club's Facebook page, a link to a PDF of those directions, as well as a link to a YouTube video that I made a couple years ago of how to carve a golf ball. Um, so I'll be putting those things on later on. But let me come back over. So I usually get asked, you know, I remember golf balls being rubber bands. Yes, years ago, golf balls were rubber bands. Every now and then I'll cut into one and I'll start hearing the snaps. And I quickly grab that and I throw it in a Ziploc bag because if you don't, it's gonna explode and you're gonna have this mess of rubber bands all over the place. It's happened to me twice and I've learned from it. So I keep Ziploc bags close by so I can throw them in there. What I also have to be careful of, some of those rubber band uh, golf balls, the center either had a rubber ball or it was a liquid core. And so if it's a liquid core, you're gonna get that all over your hands, all over your pants, it's gonna smell awful. So it's good to have a Ziploc bag nearby, but most golf balls nowadays are not the rubber band core. They kind of have this um, composite material that, like I said before, is a lot like basswood to carve, uh, except there's no grain. I don't have to worry about what direction I'm carving in because I can never go against the grain. Um, so I'm gonna switch over and I'm gonna show you kind of how I start out cutting open a golf ball. So I have a PVC cutter that I got at like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. That's what I use to cut into a golf ball. I also found that like Walmart carries them, um, Dick's Sporting Goods, usually in the golf section, they have these snap-on where you can draw center lines. And so I use this to draw a center line around the golf ball and I use it with a dry erase marker so that when I cut, the dry erase marker will eventually fade off and I can work it around to cut the cap off. I squeeze down a little bit 
I open up the tool, I reposition the golf ball, and I just work my way around until I've scored the outside with the PVC cutter. Then what I do is I grab a very small flathead screwdriver, I pry it under the cap, and I work my way around till I hear a pop. I don't know if my microphone picked that up, but it pops and then I have the inside of the golf ball. And as you can kind of see, you got the light shining off of it. There is this coating of where the glue was. So I would take, you know, a uh, flex cut knife and just kind of go around it and rough up the outside. And then I also have another center line tool. This one's a little more advanced where I can be able to draw both my horizontal and my vertical center lines on my golf ball. I usually draw them in with uh, ink so that they'll last a little longer, so like a black pen. And then as I start carving, I start drawing on eyes and whatnot, I'll do that in pencil, just so that that will clean up a lot nicer. I don't need that those lines for very long. So that's how I open a golf ball. I start off like I showed before with the eyes. So I have one here, let me bring it up a little more. I've done the one side and I drew the line and I've already done my stop cut for the other one. So when I do a stop cut, I'm just taking the uh, tip of my knife, I'm going in and I'm tracing around the line. And then what I'll start doing is I'll start carving towards that. What I first do is I go around the inside of that eyeball and I'm just taking small chips out. Uh, as my dad used to say, as I was carving, less is more. So I don't go too deep. I'm gonna be going over that a couple of times. Um, the first time I'm going around, I'm just taking out these chips to that stop cut, just so that I can kind of create some depth of my eyeball. Once I've worked my way around and I've created some depth, I'll then go around and start cleaning up the shape of it and start rounding it some more so that it will look more natural as an eyeball. As Blake said in the beginning, anytime you have a question, go ahead and unmute the microphone, ask it, because I will uh, answer as I carve. Hey Dan, that center line marker that you use, where did you get that? So I picked that up either at a, I got those at Walmart in their golf section, but I've also seen them at like Dick's Sporting Goods and other stores like that in their golf sections too. Usually uh, golfers, from what I've been told, because I've never played golf, they'll use it to draw long center lines on their ball so that when they're lining up their shot, they can uh, tee off and hit it right where they want to hit it. So... With this eyeball, I've kind of roughed out the outside. What I'll then do is I'll start going around and I'll just start smoothing that out and rounding it more. But I'm also not worried too much about details here for it to be perfect because I'm going to eventually draw on and do a stop cut for the eyelid. And so I'll be going around again on the golf ball eye to uh, round it so that the eyelid kind of protrudes out a little bit. I sometimes get asked, you know, what golf balls do I use? Is there a particular brand? Um, I usually like Top Flight. Uh, Nike produces golf balls that are pretty good. Wilson. Um, those are typically the three that I usually go to. Titleist sometimes, I'll open one up. Um, but I usually stick with those, uh, those three, the Nike, Top Flight, and uh, the Wilson golf balls. They vary in colors. Um, there's never... There's never the uh, same color um, usually when I'm cutting into my box because uh, 
there's so many different compounds and mixtures that they use. Um, you get different ones each time. So with this eyeball, I've kind of now rounded it. What I would then do is take a pencil and draw, draw on where my eyelid's gonna go. I would also then go around the outside of the eyeball to kind of smooth out this rough edge from where my stop cut was from the beginning. Other than this carving knife tool wise, uh, I also use V tools. I have a small and a large V tool that I'll use for uh, doing wrinkles as well as doing the eyelid, the eyebrows. And then I also have a U gouge that I use just one time right uh, in between where the eyebrows will meet and kind of where would the bridge of the nose be if I was actually carving on a nose. So Dan, you were saying that you liked Top Flight, Nike, and Wilson. Is there any brands that you avoid carving? Um, there's this, this one, I think it's called Snell, S-N-E-L-L. -L. Um, I found it to be very grainy material. And that when you start cutting it, you don't get smooth cuts because of all the different grains of the composite in there. It kind of leaves it very bumpy, kind of cratery um, as you carve it. So I, I try to stay away from that brand. Um, I, I've done two golf balls like that. And I just, I was never happy with, with how it looked in the end. Now I've seen pop up on my screen, some notifications of the chat. Uh, Blake, would you be able to, if there are any questions, be able to ask them to me? Yeah, and you actually just answered, uh, they were asking brands that you recommend and ones that you don't. Um, Rocket City Carver said that he recommends Pinnacle brand also. Um, Pinnacle's been pretty good too. The marker is more for putting, and uh, you can ask someone who plays golf if they have a spare marker, because a lot of times they'll give away free markers uh, as prizes. Oh, nice. Dan, you said about like the, um, the snail balls carved differently because uh, they're all grainy. Do you find that the different brands carve in any way different or are the rest just pretty much the same? The, from, what I've, from what I've done from carving, um, a lot of them carve the same way. Um, you know, I, I really like the fact that I don't have to worry about, you know, am I carving up and down or am I carving side to side, that there's no grain, I can carve any direction I want. I do need to mention though, you want to make sure you're careful. You don't go too deep because some have a liquid core just like with the rubber bands years ago some of them had liquid cores some of these also have liquid cores and i've gone um, i had one person ask me to make one as a like a neckerchief bolo and so i went and started drilling two holes in the bottom so i could put the lanyard through and uh the first one i did i drilled in and all of a sudden all this liquid came um, not really exploding out, but kind of coming out forcefully because of uh, built up pressure. Um, so you have to be careful that some have liquid cores. Um, so I made sure when I went back to do his, his bolo, I went out and bought a box of golf balls and made sure that they weren't liquid cores, um, just so that when I went in to drill, I ain't have any problems. So there's another question. Does the material dull tools more than basswood? I actually find when I'm carving, when I'm wood carving, I actually sharpen my tools more often than I do when I'm golf ball carving. I don't know if it's just because when I'm wood carving, I'm carving larger projects. And so there is more material, whereas the golf balls, small projects, just the eyes, the mouth sometimes, 
I'm carving several golf balls before I have to sharpen up my tools. But I, I tend to find that wood carving dulls them more than golf ball carving. And do you paint them after you're done? I usually wait just because I'm doing the eyes and the teeth typically. I usually wait till I have several of them because I honestly, painting has been the last couple of years, the thing that I dread the most. Um, I've started to force myself to get a little bit better at it. Um, so what I've started to do is I've started doing some golf balls where I'm having a backwards hat on and I do some sort of a logo. So that I have to do small painting. So I've done kind of uh, some logos on some different hats kind of doing the, the NFL logo on this one, doing the Eagles logo on this one. Uh, I did a pirate once, and so I had to do the eye patch, as well as getting that single gold tooth in that one. But I typically am just worried about the eyes and the teeth. Um, as I said before, I've done one where the tongue's sticking out. And I cheated and took the back cap off and took carved off some of the back to kind of make that tongue to kind of get it so that it would still be considered one piece. Um, and are and you just also acrylic paints there, Dan? The what was that? Is it just acrylic paint that you use? Yes, I just use acrylic paint. Um, and then the other thing, I, I forget what the paint is called, but uh, there's this um, gloss coat. It's an acrylic gloss coat that I put on each of the eyeballs at the end to kind of give it like a wet look to it, to kind of make it look more natural of an eye that it's, you know, had uh, tears in it and whatnot, kind of has that wet look to the eyeball. Um, but that's about it for, for painting. So Dan, is there any other way to open the golf ball other than the pipe cutter? So I have heard from other golf ball carvers over the years what they've done. Um, some have built their own uh, kind of like uh, jigs or like a vice that holds it in place. And then they've used a coping saw and gone around it with a coping saw. Um, I've heard some people actually have taken, uh, I would only do this with my carving glove on. Um, when I've done like flowers or um, that little duckling that I had in the slides, um, I'll then take a uh, exacto knife and I'll cut on the outside because sometimes I might have to do other shapes than just a simple taking the cap off. Um, I might have to kind of do zigzags and whatnot. So I'll use an exacto knife to kind of cut the outside. Um, there is a lot of difference between different golf balls in the thickness of this cap. Um, some are, are kind of thin like this, and so I only have to go in a little bit. And I've learned over time with the PVC cutter, you know, the depth, what it feels like when I get through this versus carving, cutting into the golf ball itself. Um, so... I kind of get an idea of how, how thick the cap's going to be just by feel. Um, I've even heard some people, they'll do like I do with the PVC cutter. They'll score the outside. And then someone mentioned they take a damp paper towel. They wrap the golf ball in that. They pop it in the microwave for like 10 seconds. And it just pops off because of the, uh, the pressure and the steam from that wet paper towel in the microwave and they don't even have to go in it with a screwdriver. So right now I'm just taking the tip of my knife and I'm going around that line I drew on with the pencil which is going to be my eyelid and I'm just doing a stop cut. And then what I'll do is I'll just lightly carve towards that stop cut. Just to kind of create a little bit of depth between the eyeball and the eyelid. And 
once I've gone around and done the depth, I then go back over the eyeball to kind of reshape it, make it round and smooth again. And then I have that, that look of that eyelid. I might have to go over the eyelid just a little bit just to kind of clean up the pencil line as well as kind of make it nice and uh, even in height going around. Any other questions come in? The uh, handle of your knife, it looks like it's coated in something. Is that for uh, grip or is that just yes. painted uh, for? No, I, uh, they've got this dip. I found it like Home Depot for tools. It kind of puts this rubber grip on it. And all you do is you just lightly dip the tool into the can and then you pull it out and hang it for about a 24 hour time period. And it will then set up and you have this rubberized grip then on your, your handle of your tool. Um, I found it nice just from sitting and carving. My hands will sweat a lot and it's nice to kind of have that rubber grip on the, the handle of uh, my knife blades. So with the finished product, once you've finished painting and all of that, do you then have to seal that paint somehow so it doesn't flake off or is it just good to go? I haven't. Um, and I have some golf balls that, I mean, I usually just leave them. I have a, a railing at the top of my stairs on the second floor and I just line the golf balls up along that railing. Um, so they just kind of sit there and, haven't had any problems with the, the paint flaking off or anything. Um, so I haven't really done any spraying, any type of clear coat. Uh, if I would do anything, I would maybe hit it with like some Krylon and just kind of use that to seal it. But yeah, I haven't had any problems with it so far. Dan, I've seen some with like an antiquing solution and stuff on them. Do you do that or do you just leave the solid paint? I just leave the solid paint. Um, I kind of like how, uh, how it looks with uh, the acrylic. Yeah, a little eye catching plus the natural color of whatever the inside of the golf ball being the skin tone. I just kind of find that being attractive. Um, that shows when I've had them lined up on my table, a lot of people will stop and spend time looking at those and sometimes they kind of overlook looking at the wood carvings at my table. Um, so it's interesting how these can really catch people's eye versus a wood carving. So do you um, sell mostly at shows or do you have other places people could find your work? I did have an Etsy shop up for a little while. Uh, I had to, I, I moved my wife and I bought a house back in July. Um, so I haven't gone back to the Etsy shop and put new things up yet. Um, eventually I will, but typically it's been either at wood carving shows, people have purchased a golf ball from me or they picked up a business card of mine um, and contact me like a couple of the, uh, the charities for um, their golf tournaments. They've reached out and bought 20 golf balls at a time to give out like his trophies at the end of the event. And then these have been great for giving away as, as gifts. Um, you know, the, the flower that was in the slides, I gave that one to my wife. I gave one to my mom for Mother's Day. Um, so they've been nice projects to kind of give away as gifts as well.
So I'm kind of happy with how that eye looks right now. So the next thing I'll do is I'll draw on where I'm going to put my eyebrow. And then I use a V gouge to do the initial cut for that and then go back over it with my knife to kind of clean it up. Would you mind telling us how much you get for the golf balls? So if it's just a, a normal, you know, as normal as they can be, um, face, I haven't done anything fancy like make the tongue sticking out or a cigar. I usually sell those for 25. And then if it's something wackier, um, I've even done, you know, characters of Iron Man, Spider-Man, um, there's a Star Wars character called Darth Maul, where I'll take the, the tips of the golf, golf tees and I'll glue them on the head to kind of create his uh, horns. I'll usually sell those for 30. Thank you. Certainly. And I know there's been lots of um, questions about, you know, what golf balls are the best to use and everything and then being a golfer I can tell you that any two-piece what they call a two-piece golf ball which are the cheapest ones you can get carve the best because they have the white mantle and then the softer rubber center your expensive more expensive golf balls the three-piece and four-piece balls have that two or one or two mantles inside that are harder and the solid rubber core is harder so the cheaper two-piece golf balls are the way to go. And you can find those anywhere, lots of them on, the, on a golf course. Yeah, I have a, I have a uncle-in-law who his house is on the back end of a golf course. And so whenever he finds golf balls in his backyard, he'll put them in a box for me. Um, and that's usually just how I kind of get my golf balls. Uh, walking around taking my dog for a walk in the park. Sometimes I'll come across a golf ball and just throw it in my pocket. Dan, what do you use to glue the golf ball to the golf tee? Gorilla glue. Gorilla glue? Yep. Uh, what I usually do is uh, I have these um, driftwood slabs that they sell at like Michael's. I'll drill a hole through the center. Um, I usually cut the tip off the golf ball so it's kind of flat. And then I glue, put a little bit of glue, Gorilla Glue in here and stick the golf tee in it. And then I put a little bit of Gorilla Glue up here and I stick the golf ball on top of it. And I usually just let it sit there for 24 hours and the weight of it holds it in place. And as long as it's not dropped from, you know, a high height, it stays together pretty well. Thanks. Certainly. Hey, Dan, and I just want to remind everybody that if you're having trouble seeing Dan as he's carving, there's a speaker view uh, through the Zoom chat. You can click on that on a computer. It's in the upper right-hand corner. Um, that'll put Dan as a speaker in the middle, and uh, that way you can kind of see what he's doing. I don't know if anybody's having trouble or not, but I want to bring that to your attention. So I now kind of have the eyebrow shaped kind of how I want it. I have both eyes carved with eyelids. So the next thing I would then do is now start thinking of what kind of expression that I wanna put as the mouth for this carving. Um, 
since I have kind of the eyelids drooping downwards, it's kind of a, a sad expression. So I might go with more of a, a sadder type of mouth. Um, or I could even put kind of like a mouth open and look kind of uh, shocked almost. Um, so just by shaping the mouth different ways and the eyelids and the eyes different ways, I can kind of get those different expressions. Um, I used to be asked, you know, how do, how do you come up with these different faces? And uh, when I was in college and student teaching, I, I would say it's the face of a student from my classroom. Each one of those faces is a face I've once seen. And now that I've started doing different ones with, you know, the cigars and different things like that, um, I started telling people, now it's the parents. Every time a parent comes to me at back to school night or for a parent teacher conference, I've seen one of those faces. And that's kind of what I've done to capture it is use a golf ball. Hey, Dan, we're getting uh, questions about where people can see your golf balls on social media. Can you talk about your pages, any pages that you have available? Certainly. Um, I have a page both on Facebook and Instagram. Um, they are both using uh, the handle uh, Goofballs by Dan. Um, I don't know if you can see, I uh, see on my video, I have uh, underneath my camera view it has my name and then afterwards I have at goofballs underscore by underscore Dan. That's kind of where I post different images of what I'm working on um, with my golf balls. Um, I'll also be putting on the Facebook page for this group um, a link to a YouTube video I made a couple years ago where I kind of go through from start to finish how to carve a golf ball. Um, at different points, I speed up the video just because after I've described, you know, what I'm doing, it takes a while to kind of do the shaping of an eye. So I'll speed it up a little bit and then pause the video to kind of go back at normal speed talking about what I'm doing next. So I'll put those links up as well. That video is on YouTube. So now that I've drawn on where I want my mouth to go, I'm gonna do the same process like I did with the eyes. I'm gonna go around, do stop cuts, and then I'll start carving inside and then shaping the outside. Dan, do you ever do anything with the back cover of the ball after you get finished carving the front of it? Um, I haven't. Um, the craziest I've gotten is I've I made one that was Marvin the Martian from Looney Tunes. And so I cut out where, you know, it would make it make the, the cap like a helmet. And then the piece that I took off. I then also kind of shaped that to kind of create his visor across the top. And then I painted the, the entire cap, you know, uh, the color of his helmet. But that's been the craziest I've done with the, the caps from a golf ball. Dan, is there any way of knowing what color the ball is on the inside before opening it? Um, 
So I actually found, and I have it as the last page of my uh, PDF directions. Um, another golf ball carver tried um, finding that out. And so this was something that they gave me from the early 2000s. It's going to be in the link that I, I share with the step-by-step the -step directions. Um, but he started keeping track of the different brands and then what they kind of had the inside of. But as I've gone, I've started opening up some of these and I've seen that they've been even other variations of colors. Um, so there really isn't a, a go-to place to find exactly what color is going to be inside the golf ball. I mean, I've opened up, you know, a top flight number four and a top flight number two, and they are completely different colors. Um, I've had a top flight number four and a top flight number four, and both of them completely different colors. So there is no standard, every one of this golf ball was going to be this color inside. Dan, when you open a golf ball up, um, does it dry out and get harder? So like if you opened one up and it was the wrong color, you all oh, get to it later. Would it be harder to carve down the road? No. Um, I have a basket over here right now of golf balls that I've cut open um, that I'm eventually going to get to probably, you know, within the next month or so. Um, and they don't, they don't get harder as I uh, eventually get to them. Um, the longest I've had a golf ball cap cut off that I haven't carved it would probably be just a couple of months, maybe three, four months before I eventually got around to it. Um, and I haven't noticed a difference in it being harder to carve or not. So I would imagine even ones that have been, you know, the cap's been cut off of it for a year or so are still the same uh, texture when it comes to carving it. I have some that I've, I've had open for 10 years and they don't get hard. They, they don't change. One problem that I found is that light, the light green ones seem to darken after they, that's the only color that I've noticed that the color will change on. So avoid the light green ones if you can. Hmm. Um, I mean, I always say, you know, when I cut one open, if it's pink inside, pink is my least favorite color. I always make that an angry golf ball. Um, I've only ever come across one where it was a solid black core. And uh, I actually had a buddy of mine as soon as he saw it, he's like, oh my gosh, can you make that a black rose for my girlfriend? And I kid you not, it was the hardest one I've ever had to carve because as soon as I would put a stop cut in there, I would lose it. And I had to use um, a white graphite pencil to do any of my lines, um, any of my uh, pattern lines on it. And I had to really make sure I followed that line with the tip of my knife because I would lose uh, my stop cuts so easily with that black core. But that's the only one I've ever come across that's had that color inside. Um, I've had a couple that are solid white. And then most of them are either a solid color with some speckles in it or kind of has um, hues in different spots of the same type of color. Dan, do you have to clean these golf balls before you use them? No. Um, 
I mean, sometimes wow. I've come across some where there's like dirt caked on to the outside of the cap. And so I'll sometimes scrub those off a little bit just to kind of get that cleaned up a little bit. But once I take the cap off and I rough up that glue coating that's still on it, I don't wash them or anything. Dan, when you go to rough up the golf ball with the knife, what do you do? Just scrape it? I do shallow cuts. So um, I'll just go over it. Let me grab another one. So I usually use one of, uh, I don't know if they're, they're rough cut blades from Flex Cut. So it's usually a bigger blade than the, the detail knife that I use. Um, and all I do is I just start just taking small shavings off, kind of the size of that, if you can see that. And I'll just go around the whole outside, kind of roughing it up, giving it kind of a, a textured look to it. And then I'll draw my center lines on and start getting ready to start carving it but I'm just taking off little chips. So you're actually shaving carved, maybe. part of it off. Yeah, I'm just taking off small shavings um, just to kind of get that top layer of glue off so that I'm getting back down to what the, the inside core is of the material so I can carve it. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Certainly. I've carved probably 2,000 golf balls or more, and oh, I've wow. never done that to the surface of the rubber. It's never been a problem. I've, I've found that my, my knife would sometimes slip a little bit just because it's so smooth that I, I kind of like having that roughed up a bit just so that it catches a little more. I use uh, gouges a lot, so I don't use a, the knife as much uh, to, to do the surface stuff. Maybe the tiny little details I'll get in and use a knife, but I use gouges. Like when you did the eyelid, I would do that with a V-gouge or V-tool. Okay. Yeah, my gouges are more for uh, the details at the end. I do most of the carving just with a knife. Dale, do you have an Instagram handle or a Facebook handle where you have your um, golf balls? I don't think that question was to me. I think that was to Dale. Yeah, Dale. I'll find are you, which, which Dale are you talking about? There's Dale Green, there's Dale Kirkpatrick. No, the Dale Kirkpatrick that has 2,000 golf balls. Oh, well, I, I, I don't want you to look for 2,000. I don't have them all, <laughs> but I've done at least 2,000. I have a, a Flickr account. Uh, if you email me, I'll send you a link to the Flickr account. I'm uh, carverdale123 at verizon.net. I can see though, Dan, what you mean about taking the layer off of them. I've tried with a couple of golf balls myself and 
although the ones I used were like really cheap ones, but they had like a graininess to the outside where the glue was. But it wasn't until I started to carve that I noticed underneath it was a much cleaner um, rubber to it. So yeah. uh, it never occurred to me to take the top layer off, but I think I will from now. Yeah, I just, I found that. And it also saves me at the end when I'm done doing the eyes and the mouth, I already have the, the skin area of the face already kind of roughed up and shaped that I really don't have to worry about going around the rest of the golf ball. That's already been done from the very beginning. I can just focus on the eyes, the mouth, and putting in those little bit of details at the end. The other thing I found with that as well, which it's only now occurred to me, was that the bits I hadn't carved around the outside near the edge of the golf, uh, the, the shell of the golf ball, the paint, I painted the whole thing. The paint didn't seem to uh, be as thick, almost seemed to water itself down over the bits with the glue. So that could well have been something to do with it then. That's a good idea, yeah. So then what I do, once I kind of have the mouth shaped, I come in with a smaller V gouge and I'll do the lines for the teeth. And I usually try to, I try to avoid having my first teeth mark right down the middle. I try to kind of offset it either to the left or to the right of where the center would be, just to kind of make it look more natural of a, uh, you know, not everything is lined up perfectly. And I usually just put a couple lines on there. Um, sometimes after carving them in with the gouge, I'll then go back over it with the tip of the blade just to kind of sharpen up those lines a little more. Any other questions? I don't know if you can see that too well, but kind of now have teeth there on that expression. And so then to kind of finish it up, I'll then draw on where I want wrinkles in the forehead. 
I'll put some wrinkles around the corners of the eye, right down where the, the cheeks would be for the mouth. And that kind of would then finish up the piece. The one thing I do find annoying with golf ball carving is the pieces do have like a static cling. And so sometimes they'll cling to the, your tools, they'll cling to your, uh, your hands as you're carving and sometimes can kind of get in the way of what you're trying to look at while you carve. So if anyone has any uh, ideas on that, I would love to hear some solutions. Dan, I've never tried it, but somebody said using a dryer sheet one time would work. Okay. Any other questions out there? Yeah, Dan, do you uh, do you ever put uh, noses on your faces, or is it pretty much uh, eyes and mouth? For the for the golf balls, I I typically just do the eyes and mouth. I figure I can capture enough expression just with those two features that I don't have to try to worry about doing a nose. 
because I find carving noses in my wood carvings to be challenging. Because if you ever look at any of my golf balls, there's always going to be one eyeball that's going to be bigger than the other. Um, I don't have to try to worry about trying to get them evenly matched on each side. Well, Dan, while you're finishing photo, or, um, carving the details there, um, I think Tom is going to go ahead and do the drawing. Uh, do you want to go back through that just a little bit about uh, what you're offering up so everybody kind of knows? Sure. And actually, let's do a third name. Um, so the first two names that get picked, I'm going to mail out a whole starter kit for you. It's going to come with a golf ball that I've already taken the cap off of half of it. I've roughed up the outside of it. I've already drawn on center lines. It'll come with uh, a base that's already pre-drilled with a golf tee for it so you can do your own carving. It'll have a colored printout of each step of what I do step by step for carving a golf ball. I'm going to throw in a couple of uh, my stickers and, and uh, business card contact info if you have any questions along the way so that you could carve your own. And then why don't we have for the third name pulled, we'll, uh, it'll take me a little while because I still have to get through a couple more before I start painting, but I'll send out the one that I worked on today. Sounds great. We appreciate you doing that, Dan. Sure. Tom, you want to take over now and go ahead and do the drawing? All right, excellent. So I have 30 names in here, uh, minus my name, uh, minus Blake, and also Dan. So. Here's all everyone's names, and we'll pull one out here. So the first person is Dale Kirkpatrick. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's the first one. The second one is Gary Litchfield. And the third one who Dan said is going to get the golf ball he's working on right now. Tommy Figpin. So if all three of you could uh, message the Instagram page or email one of us, um, we'll get your details and get that to Dan. Perfect. Congratulations to you three. Uh, hopefully you'll uh, find golf ball carving enjoyable, um, especially uh, being able to get one of those starter kits to be able to start working on it yourself. Any final questions? All right. Well, Dan, we appreciate you taking time out today to present for us. Uh, definitely an interesting topic and uh, it's something that I'm going to try. So I look forward to that. Um, as we do every week, I want to thank Larry Green for providing the Zoom uh, software that we use to uh, allow the number of people that we have on here each week. So thank you, Larry. Uh, thanks again to Tom Bate for uh, controlling the Instagram page, the YouTube page, the Facebook page. Um, again, thank you all for taking time out of your day. We know this is uh, the beginning of summer and uh, there's other things that you could be doing. So I appreciate you tuning in with us. And uh, next week, um, we are going to have the cereal carver presenting on spoons. Uh, I think that's correct. Isn't that right, Don? Yeah, it's Don, the serial carver, who's going to be here with us next week. Yeah, correct. There he is. Uh, I'm ready. We'll in the same time next week at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, and if you have any suggestions about future topics, uh, feel free to reach out to Tom and I, and uh, we'll see if we can get that put together. And uh, we continue, we'll plan on continuing to do this. Uh, indefinitely. So um, hopefully we'll bring new topics to you. Uh, thanks again for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week at three o'clock. Sounds great. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you a lot. Thanks Dan. That was really great. Thanks Dan. Thanks guys for setting this up Blake. Appreciate it. Bye. Absolutely.